GAA. We all belong here, in this place, at this time. We belong not because of who we are or where we come from. Being here means belonging. Belonging means knowing you're part of a community. A community that has a place for all. Where potential is nurtured. Where individuals become teams. We honour the legacy of those who went before and strive to build a legacy of their own. Some of us play, some of us used to play, some of us never played. We all belong. Belonging means having a voice, means being able to say what you think is right. Being listened to. Belonging means respecting each other, means being there for each other, on the pitch, off the pitch. Belonging means rolling our sleeves up and doing what needs to be done. We all belong, whether it's our first day or our hundredth year. We all belong here because this place belongs to us all. Our GAA, where we all belong. Right, well, with us now we have Dara Bourne, our senior referee for Sunday. Um, thanks a million, Dara, for taking a, a little bit of time out on a, an important week for you. Um, firstly, I suppose, congratulations on getting the big job. Uh, thanks for having me here, Elmer. Yeah, um, delighted to be here. Delighted to get the match as well, yeah. It'd be, it'd be a good one to get now. Well, indeed. Uh, look, I suppose, I'm not sure of the exact stats, but at 24 years old, I suppose you have to be one of the the youngest men to get a, a senior football final in, in this county, definitely. I suppose you can just maybe sum up what it means to, to be picked out for the big day. Uh, well, the year has been going well for me. Like, you know, um, every match I've done, I've heard good reports back, you know, and a lot of, lot of things went well behind the scenes as well with umpires and all, you know. We got our heads down and actually got stuck into it, like, you know, and it's worked out well. It's hard to say what it takes to be a good ref or a bit of common sense, maybe. I'd say it'd be the most important thing. Yeah, and definitely, look, you've had a, a rapid rise through the ranks, in fairness. You've, you've done a couple of Junior A finals there, I think 2018 and 2019 replay, you know, and, and you've been very good. You've done a, a semi-final there this year. And just, you probably mentioned that you hit on it there, I suppose, a big part of your team, you know, you know, it's not just you out there on Sunday. You have a good team behind you. You're trusted lieutenants, I suppose we call them. Yeah, uh, I'm lucky I have four very good umpires, in fairness to them. And if any of them do make a call, I can trust them, you know. They, they're they fairly good now, I have to give them that. Like, if I'm following the play, I know that behind me they are watching my cops, you know. And it's good to have them behind you. And I suppose, uh, just, just coming into the big day, will you... Have any set routine yourself? Uh, you know, do, is there? Do you have any superstitions, or or do you not want to give them away at this stage? Oh no, I've I've no superstitions, not yet. Anyway, no, no. <laughs> no. Well, that's it. Look, I suppose Sunday going forward, uh, you know, the biggest day of your career so far. And um, you got into refereeing at adult level at a particularly young age. Like, what what dragged you in there? You know, what was the the graph for the job? Was it just Purely GAA being part of it, or, or you know, what brought you in at that, at that stage? Um, I was at a football match in uh, Kiltigan, and I remember Peter Kyo actually was the man that was talking to a few of us, and he told, told us about starting refereeing. And I have to say, it was Peter Kyo that got me into it. And I just started doing juveniles, I was 17 years of age when I started, and I just liked it from then on, so I did, and just got hooked to it. Good, very good. Well, look, I suppose. Um, all I can do here now is uh, wish you the very best of luck Sunday. Um, as you said, you have, you have two good teams in the final. It should be a, a right cracking game and I'm sure you won't take anything from it and the very, very best of luck to you on Sunday. And thanks very much, Evan. Thanks. Lovely. Thanks a million, Dara. Uh, we are very happy to be joined by Larkin McMahon here from the Blessington GA Club. Larkin, thanks a million for taking your time out uh, on a very, very busy week for you up there. Um, it's been a stellar year so far for the Blessington lads. They've found their way into a county final. They had three night wins there early in the year and uh, things must look really good from, from a Blessington point of view. 
Oh yeah, look, it's it's going well. We had a, we hadn't a great league campaign, but once we started in the championship, we've been very lucky, and a lot of matches have gone our way. We've had a few close ones, but thank God we've made it this far. So made it all the way so far to here where we are today. Yeah, and look, I suppose we talked about the tight wins early, one against Dunlavin, one against Tinny Healy, coming from behind at the death against Arclough Jerry showed a real fight and spirit among the group. But the last day against Ratnew, it has to be said, from the neutral point of view, it was, it was a masterclass from the lads. They gave a real, a huge display of football. They did. Look, we knew it was in them, and thank God it came right on the day. But I have to say, though, I... We would have, I suppose, we made better use of the wind in first half than Brett New did when they had it in the second half. And yeah, look, we we had them last year. We were beaten by six points in the championship, and they came back in us. So that was always in the back of our minds. But we we learned from that match, and thank God it worked out this year for us. Yeah, and I suppose you mentioned last year and, and the Rat New comeback, even with that early goal in the second half, your lads had a bit of a steely resolve about them. You know, the next four attacks up the field, they got four good scores and almost put the game to bed at that stage. We did. Well, as I, as I said to you, we did learn from us. You know, I think last year, once they started to come back at us, our heads dropped, whereas this year, we've had instilled that belief in them to keep going for the final whistle and... Thank God it worked out on the day. Look, I suppose, you know, there's always been fabulous footballers coming out of blessing, and, you know, none more so than the current group. But, you know, there's huge experience in that side, but they've really been been uh, blended in with this uh, group of young lads that are coming through there at the minute. We all, it's all about the squad. And, you know, we talk about not them and names maybe, but we know, like, you know, the Kevin Quinn's, Connell Gallagher's, you know, Brian Bourne, you've let your name, you know, these... These lads coming through, they've actually had experience on the senior panel, some of them as well with the county. You know, it, it, it's a, it seems to be the perfect blend there in Blessington. It's working very well. Look, it's what we've had. We have a big panel there, a panel of 24, and every one of them are capable, well, actually a panel of 30, because every one of them are capable of coming in on the day. And that has made a huge difference. Like you mentioned, the... Uh, those three. We also have had two that come up from minor, our goalkeeper Jack Sargent and Dan Cooney there who's been playing half forward for us. Um, so, And then with the older fellas that have been there for years the McLaughlin's own Kyo uh, Kevin Hanlon it is all, like they have helped them along and this has all worked out very well for us, thank God. Yeah and I suppose just looking forward then to Sunday, you know a formidable opponent, uh, your your neighbours just down the road as well to spice things up another little bit. They're the current champions. They've you know they they looked a bit rocky in early parts of the championship, but they're back in the final now. And you know a, a really strong traditional club, and it's not going to be easy on Sunday. Oh no, it won't be. Look, we've played them since this present present management took over. But two years ago, Blessington, we played them three times and they've best, best us every time, most recently in the Herbie Hill Cup final. And they have some fantastic footballers from Mark Jackson right through to the Kills up front and John McGrath and, and Adam McHugh. Like, that's a formidable partnership up, up in the front. Um, but look, we have the backs there that should be able to hold them and hopefully <laughs> we'll do us on the day. Yeah, look, Lark, and again, I just thank you for taking your time out. As we said, it's a very busy week for you lads up there. Thanks a million for taking your time out. And we wish you the very, very best of luck on Sunday, and we'll see you in Ockerman. Thanks again. Thanks very much, Amit. Appreciate it. It's now the Boston, Boston Glass manager, uh, Brian Heaslip. Brian, uh, you're back again. Congratulations. You've navigated your way into a, another county final and lo uh, looking for a two in a row at this stage. Yeah, thanks, Emmett. Yeah, it is. It's uh, this time of year. It's great to be to be looking forward to another championship final. Um, you know, obviously coming out the back of last year and you know, we've uh, we've kind of added to the squad this year, which has been a massive help to us. And, you know, while we kind of struggled away along a little bit, we're, we're absolutely delighted. 
and looking forward to the game the weekend. Yeah, and I suppose just I suppose looking back, first of all, you know, the, the loss to Red New after extra time to see the team seem to struggle and those matches, some of the teams coming in at a couple of good games under their belt. And um but I'd say that, you know, at the same time you're probably happy that the, even with the extra time that game would have brought you on a lot. Yeah, I suppose in that sense, you know, it's it's not easy to be happy when, when Rat New get one over on you, but um, you know, we took a lot of positives out of the game. Like we, we created a lot of chances early in the game and we, we I think we missed probably one eight in the first twenty-five minutes and, and Rat New kind of went up the pitch and scored three or four points in a row, like which was a bit of a setback, obviously. But I think the game itself, guys getting as you say, getting the extra time. I thought in normal time we finished the game pretty well. Uh, extra time, everything is up for grabs, and in fairness, you know the lads worked really hard. Just, just come out on the wrong side of it. Yeah, and look down the down the road. Then the Kiltegan lads came at you, and it's supposed to be nine points down after twenty minutes in that one. And you know the thing I said after the match was not alone were you nine points down. Kiltegan kicked another six points in that game from that point. Like it was a massive win, a massive comeback there to win that by two points. It was, um, and in actual fact, I think in your commentary that day you mentioned it, it. It actually looked like you know the rabbit stuck in the headlights, and and in the first half of that game, you know, it just you know we we attacked early, two or three opportunities, and we lost the ball. And in fairness, Kiltegan, you know, they moved the ball really quick up to an area and got the ball into Shawnee Furlong. Uh, we struggled to deal with it. We were probably probably left our full back line a bit open, um, in in trying to take control of the game early on. And, and in fairness, Shawnee Furlong, you know, was on fire and uh, they kicked some really good scores. So, yeah, we found ourselves, you know, we found ourselves with an uphill battle. Yeah, and I suppose a huge battle with Denard the next day. He got the better of that in the last few minutes, the closing stages. And then, you know, a huge win against St. Pat's the last day. You know, the goals at vital times, I think, really stood to you there. You know, your, your attack really, you know, your, as a team, you really played well. Golden pads, but like it, your attack really came up trumps at the right times as well. They did, yeah, yeah. In fairness, and I think even in that game, just go back to that Kiltegan game, we got a goal in each half at a crucial time in that game also. So, like in fairness to the lads, and and similar in the Denard game, you know when things weren't really going away, the lads didn't panic and they stuck with it. Uh, the game last week against St Pat's was obviously going to be a another step up. Pat's been county champions like two years out of the last three, so. Um, it was a it was a really tough, fast game, tactical game also. Um, and in fairness to the lads, we went probably a bit more, you know, they were a bit more driven, I'd say, in the game, uh, knowing that a county final place was at stake. So again, we controlled the game at stages. Pat's Pat's probably got a lot of possession in the middle toward, you know, later on in the game. But I thought we defended immensely. Um, we we had a, a back line there, you know two, three young lads in it as well, and they defended really, really well. Yeah, and I suppose looking forward then, you're coming into a, a final against, you know, a Blessington team that are in super form. They've, they've probably showed they can win every way this year, to be fair to them. You know, three really tough grinding battles. And then, you know, they gave a great display the last day against Red New, almost a tour de force display from a Blessington point of view. So they're coming in in really hot form here. They are, they are. They're definitely the farm team of the year, and, and they've improved massively, um, you know, over the past couple of years. Um, definitely, I think in, in the Rat New game, like a bit kind of the opposite to ourselves. They they took their scores with the wind in the first half. They scored really well, and they were scoring from everywhere also. Um, so yeah, look, I'm sure coming into the game, lessons in the field that they have a, a good a chance as we have, and really it's going to be all on the day. I think it'll be a a really good football game for, for the neutral in particular, yeah? Well, indeed. And look, we're looking forward to it as well from where we are. Listen, Brian, I know it's a busy week for you. Thanks a million for taking your time out again and the very, very best of luck on Sunday. Not at all. Thanks a million. Wicklow GEA's healthy clubs prioritise areas such as healthy eating, mental fitness, Substance abuse, gambling awareness, diversity and inclusion, and critical incident planning. For more information, please ring Dave on 087 382 
1625 or email chair.hwc.wicklow at gaa.ie. It's a long drive to Croker from here. In ways even longer for the fans. The effort, I can tell you, it's worth it. Even today, I can still hear it. The roar of the hill. It's gonna be something else. You're all very welcome here back to Ockram here today for the Boom and Pat Farm Higher Senior Football Championship Final between local rivals Barton Lass and Blessington. We should be in for a cracking game just earlier in the day on Talker have made their way up to senior by defeating a valiant Hollywood team in the Intermediate Football Championship Final. Both teams here at the minute just about to line up behind the band to do their parade. So um, I have Carmack Doyle and Alan Nolan with me here on co-commentary today thanks to the two lads for coming in lads this has been a fantastic championship so far these two teams have found their way into the final it should be a cracking game yeah yeah it should be a great one Emmett um, as you say a local derby and as local a derby as you can get um, for the final uh, I think two of them probably based on their semi-finals and the round before that probably the two best teams of the year really I think um, in terms of how the matches have gone I think as we said last week the way weather is at the moment and the conditions, there's not going to be a whole lot in it either way, I think, no matter which team you fancy. Yeah, look, at I think it's two very well-matched teams. Uh, one team, you could say, is the inform team is Blessington. They've been plodding along very, very well there. They didn't look in trouble in too many of the games. But what Barton Glass have come through a more tough, tough uh, campaign. They've, they've dragged a good few dogfights, really, um, get, getting through matches, you know, like the Keegan one really stands out here uh, to me, you know, like that was obviously a, a dog final local derby as well, like, and they just they showed the real steel of how to get across the line and how to win. 
Yeah, I suppose nine points down after 20 minutes in that match. And like Kiltegan went on to kick another six points in that game is what stood out to me. So they turned it around and got their victory. As I said, the big thing for me with Blessington is the three earlier games. It was a tour de force against Ratneau the last day, to be fair though. But the three games before that, they won three really tight, scrappy games. And that's a huge step up. They were games down the years that Blessington probably didn't get through. And they really seemed to have turned a corner in that facet. Yeah, like in the game here again, or again uh, Dunlavin, like it was a really horrible wet day, you know, an injury in it there the game was stopped for nearly over the quarters of an hour um, when Henry got hurt that time for Dunlavin like, but, and then in, if the game had went on for another minute or two would they have been here today because like, Dunlavin were, were another kick of the ball and they, they, they were on the rampage there you know so look to me the big thing that's going to stand out today is the two number 14s which who can they get the ball to first the Kevin Quinn the Adam Hugh the two of the lads I think they're two fabulous fab, fabulous footballers and they're really going to be the Bairn and who's going to win yeah, and I suppose just looking down through the few little bits of stats I have scribbled down, the big thing for me was beyond the blessing inside. They've conceded seven goals in this championship so far. If they concede, like if they, if this full forward line from Barton Lasky had them today, it's going to be it's going to be huge. They'll have to cut that out. You know, they'll have to look at conceding no goal today after to win this final. Yeah, I think so. And last week, I think, or um, in the last round, uh, Barton Glass and Pats. Um, we said before it that that bottom glass full forward line have goals in them, or the bottom glass forward line have goals in them. Um, and I think, you know, as Alan said, like Blessington had been impressive. Um, they won those tight matches. And I just think it, that that match against Pats, that first half, that bottom glass first half of attacking football against Pats was probably as impressive as I've seen this year yet. Um, and I think if that they can get the ball into the lads, and as Alan said, if if Adam McHugh plays like he did the last day, John McGrath won loads of ball in there, and John Kyo in particular was handling a lot of ball. I think, you know, it's the same as the last day. I think a couple of goals, whatever team can manage a couple of goals, are going to be hard bet. We're just going to have uh, our Ron uh, Naveen. Now we'll bring you the teams then after that, so we'll, we'll stand up to attention for our national anthem here today. We have smoke canisters and everything going off here. It's a real, a real atmosphere to this one. A great rendition of our Ron Naveen there. We'll just give you the teams quickly here now. We'll have Barton Glass up on the screen first there. In goal is Mark Jackson, David Gittins, Keane Lee and Carol Furlong make up the full back line. A half back line of Patrick Burke, Billy Cullen and Thomas Burke. Kevin Murphy, the captain and Jason Kennedy man the middle of the field. Uh, Stephen Heaslip, Johnny Kyo and Sean Doody are in the half forward line with Tommy Kyo, Adam McHugh and John McGrath making up the full forward line. Uh, the Blessington team is up on your screen there now. We have a couple of changes from that, but Jack Sargent is in goal. Steve Bone, Jack Gilligan and Colin Gallagher are the full back line. Kevin Hanlon, Paul McLaughlin and Brian Bone, the half back line. Patrick O'Connor, the captain, and Owen Kyo in midfield with Craig Maguire, Anthony McLaughlin. Number 12, Dan Silk Featherstone is replaced by Kevin John Rogers. Uh, the full forward line, number 13, Mikey O'Connor is replaced by number 25, Jack Cotter. Kevin Quinn is at full forward with Dan Cooney replacing Curtis Gerrihy in the inside line. It all looks good, lads. We all look like we're all ready to rock and roll here. Just looking around for any more switches that there might be. I can. Number 17 is in. It's Chris Heaslip is in. I think he's in for Stephen Heaslip as far as I've been told. So 17, Christopher Heaslip starts instead of... Instead of uh, Stephen he slipped there, we're just about ready to go. Our big match referee for today is the man from just up the road in Ballymanus, Darabourne. Gets ready to 
rock and roll here. I don't know the exact stats. I'd say he's one of the youngest men ever to take a, a county final in any county. He's at 24 years of age, but he's earned the right with some great performances down the years. So should be a good, fast-flowing game of football here. We're just about ready. Craig Maguire has gone to the middle of the field wearing number 10. Anthony, Anthony McLaughlin lines out after what looked like a bad injury the last day. He's back. He's gone in on the edge of the square. We're ready to rock and roll. The 2021 Boom and Platform Senior Football Championship final is underway. Craig Maguire gets the ball. Hand passes it off inside. It's a hectic start to this one. Owen Kyo's on the ball. Blessing to now look to recycle the ball and get it through the hands early on here. It's out as far as Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor looks up, goes long and dive, tries the outside of the boot. It doesn't come off, but it gets as far as uh, his number nine is Owen Kyo. And Owen Kyo kicks a huge score to start this game off. Blessington playing with the win down into the town goal. I should have said that a bit earlier as uh, Barton last play against the wind here, but that's a huge score from Owen Kyo to start this one off. Oh, yeah, massive point. Uh, I think Patrick O'Connor probably a little bit lucky that the ball went to where it did. He was going for the far corner. Mark Jackson kicks the ball out. He's come off the hands of Jack Cotter. Uh, it looks like John McGrath has pulled out as far as wing forward. He takes a quick, goes back as far as uh, David Gettins. Gettins comes out with the ball, gets to the 65. No one fronts him up just yet. Pops the ball back off there into the hands of Kevin Murphy. Murphy looks for Barton last now to go through the hands as uh, Pat Burke kicks a loose pass on its away and it's into the hands of Jack Gilligan. Gilligan look for, uh, looks to start an attack from the back here. Kevin Hanlon is on the ball here. Gets it out as far as on. Kyo, Kyo. Again, tries to get around to Tom Burke. He does well. Gets the ball off to Kevin Hanlon. Sean Doody tries to get a hand back in. Hanlon runs and down. Gives the ball off to Brian Bowen. Bowen twists and turns. And again, good defence from Barton. That's to have stood their men up to stop the pointy attack. It's in the hands of Kevin Quinn. Quinn solos that languid style, that easy looking style that he has, but he's pushed and he gives away a free. And it's a chance for Blessington to double their lead here. And Blessington have got a good, strong foothold in the first minute and a half of this one. They have, yeah. They've started really, really, uh, really quick. Um, that was, you'd be happy enough if you were getting frees like that in the county final now. You know, we probably gave him a little tug of the arm, but um, there's, there's been worse, I'd say, in county finals. Especially in the opening exchanges, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But Anto McLaughlin goes short out to Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor looks to wrap the boot around this one. It goes away out under the tricolour. It's hanging in the air. Looks like a nudge in the back. It is a nudge in the back there from Dan Coney. It'll be a free out to Barton last just to settle the nerves in there. The defending champions. There's a good few positional switches all around, but uh, everyone, no point even telling you what they are because they're all <laughs> over the place. Now. <laughs> everyone is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Right, Anton Lockton looks for a man that was carried off here a week ago. He's moving very free on that leg. He's pursuing his man down the field. As away come Barton last with the ball was a late tackle play away. The ball is in. Tommy Kyo's out in front. Kyo looked like he got a shove in the back, but gets the ball out as far as Adam McHugh. McHugh is about 35 yards out. Looks to take on his man. Needs support out under the scoreboard there. Gets it to Tommy Kyo. He finds Sean Doody. Doody pops the ball off to. John McGrath, 45 yards out, he looks up and uh, sizes up his options. He pops it off to Kevin Murphy and takes it back. Bottom last look to build slowly here into this breeze. Again, McGrath takes on his man, does really well. Takes on all comers. A little bit tight there with Tommy Kyo, but they do enough to get the ball back as far as Chris Heaslip. Was Heaslip fouled? He was, says the referee. Dara Byrne is a push. The blessing and crowd underneath us are not overly happy with that, but it's a free into bottom last. And again... Just one of those silly little pushes and nudges. It's one of them. Yeah, another one similar to the one down in the corner here. Again, as I said, you'd be you'd be happy if you're getting them as a forward now all day long. But uh, Blessing can start fast. Bolton Glass haven't started the same way they did against Pats. Like no, they've they been a little bit slower coming yeah, forward. Yeah, that. Like and Blessing and backs would be happy there. The fourth raid up the field from Bolton Glass there. Like McHugh got the ball 35 yards out. They actually pushed them over to the far sideline at the roadside. And they had to bring the ball back across over here to try win a, win a free. With, like McGraw, like he was going uh, lateral across the field. So like that's a, that's the first test and they've won the battle there yeah. so far. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Mark Jackson hits this and oh, it's a huge kick from Mark Jackson. Stray has a die in over the bar and that's a, a big asset to have someone that can kick a point like that against the breeze and it's a level game here in Ockram. Three and a half minutes gone. Jack Sargent will take the kick out. Doesn't waste any time. Tries to pick out uh, Brian Bowen but it breaks away from him. Barton lass have numbers around the ball. Blessington have two though. One of those numbers is Jack Cotter. Cotter all the way out in the midfield. Uh, police in his corner. Steve Bowen gets the ball out here as far as Kevin John Rogers. He looks up Again, turns back with the ball, looks to go to Brian Bowen. Again, it's a loose tackle. There's huge pressure from the bottom. That's forwards on the ball.
Paul here, but Lessington are calm and composed and work their way out. Get the ball out as far as Paul Midlachlan. Midlachlan, the number six solos forward, looks to go direct. Hyde, looping ball in, but it's over the head of everyone. And Owen Keogh has found himself in a little bit of space in the back. Gets the ball to Anto Midlachlan. He pops it out to Kevin Quinn. Quinn drops the shoulder, looks to get back on his right foot. Recycles it back out to Anto Midlachlan. Gets the ball across. Kevin Murphy comes to it and just gets there in time. Patrick O'Connor gets a little touch on it. Gets it to Kevin John Rogers. Rogers is tackled by Kevin Murphy. Again, good hard tackles going in from both sides. Kevin Hanlon's on the ball. Gets it to Midlachlan. Back to Hanlon. Hanlon stands up and looks into Kevin Quinn. Quinn, can he work his magic from here? It'll be an ask, but he's gone past one tackle. He comes back out with the ball, gets the ball as far as Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon, talk about shot, gets it to Lachlan. It's recycled, it's patient, it's high, it's looping, it's dangerous. Mark Jackson is under, gets his fist up. Ball breaks out here as far as Dan Coney. Brilliant save by Jackson in the goal there. Done really well to come out. Looked like there may have been a tug back, but play away to the referee. But that's a good save from Jackson. And the first dangerous ball that went in there. Keen Lee comes away with the ball gives it to Kevin Murphy back to Sean Doody Bottom last get numbers back inside their own 45 now and look to work the ball out here David Gittins gets the ball across as far as uh, Patrick Burke Burke on that far side goes raiding down the field underneath the stand there's a little bit of green grass in front of him he's gone into it 65 yards out from his own goal gets the ball into Tommy Kyo there's a good hand in from Conal Gallagher though the heavy shot on Gallagher there from uh, Sean Doody stops him in his tracks Gallagher's up and away the free is taken quickly to Craig Maguire gets the ball to Patrick O'Connor O'Connor steps inside Kevin Murphy has he got around him Murphy just does enough to halt his progress and gives the ball across field to Kevin John Rogers there's a man outside him in space he doesn't opt to go for him he opts for Anto McLaughlin McLaughlin looks to come back here as far as Jack Cotter his space on the ball there's time on the ball around the 45 here for Blessington as uh, Rogers has the ball now gets it Anto McLaughlin he sees a pocket of space tries to get into it gives the ball back as far as Patrick O'Connor O'Connor Connor goes with the outside of the right boo. It's high and it's over the bar. A huge score from Patrick O'Connor. A captain score in the early stages of this game. They were patient, but that's a brilliant score. Brilliant score, yeah. We were just saying here, I think Bogglass were finding it hard to get to the pitch of this. They're, they look a little bit flat-footed there, like against Pats. They were all flooding forward. We counted forward and back there on that attack. Kick out from Mark Jackson is a huge one. Sean Doody's underneath, but the ball breaks through his hands. Jack Cotter picks up the pieces, gets the ball out to Owen Kyo. Kyo pops a pass in, looking for Kevin Quinn. Quinn is out in front of his man. Carl Furlong does well, Quinn. He turns him. Furlong looks to get back. Again, there's a tangle of legs. It'll be a free to Kevin Quinn. And once he gets the wrong side of you like that, he's very dangerous. But that's what they're going to have to do. Like, if Bodden has to go on his hit back there, like, Blessman are going to pick him off. But going back there to about two minutes ago, Blessman had a scoring chance here. They're trying to work it in too, too quick to have the win. They've reason they're back. Take a pop at it. It goes wide, it goes wide. But, like, use the win when you have it there. Don't try to walk it in. As well. have good, good ball strikers yeah. as well. So, Santo McLaughlin is one of those. He's a free. He's about 10 or 11 yards in from the sideline here on the press box side. He's about 25 yards out. Kicks this one. It's tail and all over. It's not going to go wide. Breaks inside and David Gettins is the first one to react to it. Does really well, comes away with the ball. He needs support now. That support is in the hands of Pat Burke. Burke gets the ball, kicks it long up the field, looking for John McGrath. McGrath takes it in ahead of Jack Cotter there. An angled little ball in across to Chris Heaslip. Looked like Heaslip might touch it on the ground, but he does great work to pick it up at the second attempt. Wins his free, takes his free. Quick looks for Adam McHugh. There's numbers back there. Oh, McHugh gets out between the two and takes it. Does really well. Has a look around it. Uh, support is slow coming down and gets it into Tommy Kyo Kyo size up his options Colin Gallagher is in front of him Gallagher does well to turn him back he comes all the way back with the ball here though as far as Johnny Kyo Kyo looks to take on uh, Stephen Bone he does or Brian Bone he does take him on a chance for Kyo but a blessing to get numbers back though it's into the hands of John McGrath McGrath drills one with the outside of the boot and it's gone to the left of the post and wide and, uh, non-characteristic one wind or no wind you'd have fancied uh, fancy John John McGrath to stick that one. He would have done, yeah. He was kind of central enough and just skewed off the outside of the boot a little bit. Kick out from Jack Sargent. Oh, just about clears the bottom last man, but it gets into the hands of Kevin Hanlon and away he goes raiding up the field. Chris Heaslip tries to work back, tries to get back in front of him, gets the ball into the hands of Craig Maguire. Maguire gives the ball to Kevin John Rogers. Blessington look to build again. We're nearly nine minutes into this one. It's two points to Blessington. It's one to Barton Glass. Paul McLaughlin charges forward the ball. He finds Brian Bone in space in front of him. There's lots of space here. Barton Glass aren't really pushing up on these Blessington lads. They're giving them the chance to run down the lines at him, but it's back in the hands of Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor just about holds up the point of the attack and gets it out to Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon has a look inside the Kevin Quinn, Quinn now a little bit of space but the numbers converge on him but again there's a tangle of legs and Kevin Quinn and it'll be a free in 
You could nearly say the whole half back line of blessing and of the freedom of here to me. Like the, just the way they're, they're waving up the field here and, and bottom that they're just standing, their hands and hips, they look tired already. Yeah. Like you're nine minutes into the game, like if you're tired already, you're in big trouble, lads. Yeah, no, just my thing on it as well, like Blessington should forge forward now. You know, yeah. they seem to be stopping the point of attacking, coming back and, and uh, back across the 45. The, there's space there, they, they can get momentum up, they should run into it. It's Anton McLaughlin, he's about 40 yards out, he's about six yards to the side, side of the post. He kicks this on high, kicks it through and kicks it over the bar and three points to one now to Blessington with the breeze in their back. Just about 10 minutes on the clock here in the boom and platform higher senior football championship final for 2021. Mark Jackson has the kick out. Has a look up to see where these runners are going. Jason Kendi heads for the stand and comes back. Long kick down the field. A huge kick again from Jackson. Sean Doody's underneath. Ball is broken away, but it's picked off by Kevin Murphy. Murphy done well to read the break there. Gets the ball to Jason Kennedy again. A twist and turn now with trouble and charges forward the ball. Kevin Murphy gives it off as far as Tom Burke. Burke solos and has a look. Solos again. Stands up, gets the ball to Sean Doody. Doody pops the ball off to Johnny Keo. Keo at number 11. He'll try and pull the strings for this spot and that's team. Gives the ball back as far as Tom Burke. Burke has a look up his options. Gets the ball to Billy Cullen. It's a poor kick down a straight down the neck of the other number six, Paul McLaughlin. And he gladly takes the ball, gets it to Jack Cotter. It's a free. There's no advantage to the referee. McGrath foul. Paul McLaughlin looks to go long into space. He does. Oh, it's a peach of a pass into the runner. Kevin Hanlon was just gone, going to be him to the line. The idea was right. It's just a, a millimetre of an execution. Yeah, off. yeah, the right idea. But again, tons of space out here on that wing if he had got that ball. Um, so I, ball glass are playing like a nervy team, even though they're probably not like, they're, they're not pushing up. They are there, but like, there's a little bit of a mismatch here. Like They're expecting Sean Doody to try up and down the lane and follow, and follow uh, the wing back from the rest of them. With Kevin Hanlon. I'd be switching Jason Kennedy and putting Bodge into the middle to try win, win dirty ball and win a break. Here come Blessing and they've picked off the ball again. It's in the hands of Kevin Quinn. Quinn gets the ball back to Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor gets the ball, little dink into the corner in as far as Anton McLaughlin. McLaughlin is keen Lee on his case there. The Sidesteps, twists and turns back in and gets the ball off as far as on Kyo Kyo deep up the field now started a wing forward he's popping up all over the place gets the ball back to Patrick O'Connor he'll shoot he pumps this one in and Mark Jackson comes out gladly takes it gives the ball to Jason Kennedy Kennedy comes away up the field again there's no real support for Kennedy now there is with Sean Doody he breaks the first tackle but he's deep in his own 45 gives the ball to Kevin Murphy Murphy gives it back to Kennedy Kennedy solos and has a look again the numbers push up there's good uh, good Pressure on the ball from Blessington and it's keeping bottom lash right back in their own half. Away comes Kevin Murphy with the ball. Murphy 65 yards out from the town goal. Pops a little reverse pass off as far as Patrick Burke. Burke has a look up, gets the ball into Adam McHugh. McHugh takes the pass, does well. He's fouled though by Jack Gilligan, says Dara Byrne. And it'll be a free in. It'll be a free in to the bottom last men. They're deciding whether to... They're bringing Jackson up now, they are. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the first trip to First three balls McHugh would got, he got him about 40, 45 yards out. Once again, if I was a blessing in the back, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, into the wind, he's getting the ball out there, he's not a threat, you have a free now, all right. Still, it's not an easy kick. And plus the fact as well, you know, if he's getting the ball out there, you have to have the runner off the shoulder for him yeah, to pop yeah, the pass. Yeah. They just they just don't seem to be running like that in those lines that they have done all year. But it, I think it's coming from the back. It's the way Bolton Glass are set up means that Adam McHugh is forced to come out. Because like every time that ball is breaking down, like okay if you want to keep one man back but there's two or three bottom glass lads staying inside their 45 near nobody with the hands and the hips the kick is from Mark Jackson Jackson gets a good connection again and oh it's a good kick again two scores for bottom that's two scores for Mark Jackson from long range freeze and it's still only a one point game blessing and I've had an awful lot of the possession here but bottom glass against the breeze are just keeping themselves in the hunt here it's Jack Sargent to take the kick out Sergeant goes long down the field again. It's a huge kick underneath. It's Kevin Murphy. There's a hand from Tom Burke, but he only knocks it down to Kevin John Rogers. It's into the hands of Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon pops it off into Brian Bone. Bone, the number seven, gets up the field. Oh, he does really well. Pops the ball into Owen Kyo. Kyo. Uh, David Gettins comes across to try and marshal him, but Kyo gets across to the top of the D into a shooting uh, position. Well, did he overcarry it? He did. Just pressure on him at the time. And what looked like a good attacking opportunity, he has just broke down from a bit of indecision there. But that's what I was saying earlier. Have a, sc a score and chance, take it. You know, and the ball should have been got to Owen Kyo first time when it broke down here. You, um, mm -hmm. Bone didn't get to him quick enough, you know, and he had it back to him. Then he'd turn around, his momentum was run, it stopped, and he'd start over again and hook it into traffic. 
Kevin Murphy takes the free. He goes back to David Gittins and he fires the ball out to Keane Lee there on the far side. Lee solos with this one. Anto McLaughlin sizes him up. McLaughlin does well to stop him in his tracks. Pops a pass off. It's a loose pass all over his Dan Coney there. Bottom blast making their own problems here as uh, Pat Burke goes back and gets the ball. Stoops down. He's isolated though. He'll need support and there's two blessing men in his case. He does really well but he's been out for a 45 and that's a huge turnover for blessing there. Putting pressure on the man on the ball. They've done really well. Yeah, just just strength there. That's all it was. He was strong enough to hold him off, and the ball got to the ground, and yeah, they like, pushed him right down. It's Co Coney's first year coming through now. He was minor last year, like he done very well again. Rack new last, last week as well. He's very very strong. Two lads on him there. He still he got tangled up on him. He plunged through, put the pressure on him, and ball ran out over the end line. 45 is taken quickly, it's back into the hands of Paul McLaughlin here though, McLaughlin they're looking inside, they're putting their hand up, they want one in around the square but Kevin John Rogers decides to recycle the ball back to Brian Bowen, he gives it to Stephen Bowen, he breaks the tackle of Kevin Murphy, gets the 45 yards out, again it's across the 45, Dan Coney is on the ball, huge pressure, here's only one man up for bottom blast, they're all back defending at this stage, they're just keeping themselves in the game at the minute, as far as you can see they're trying to take the sting out of Blessingdon and just stay, stay in this game and Blessingdon have come all guns blazing in this opening 15 minutes here. We must be getting your water break time. Jack Gilligan gets forward with the ball. He has a look, prods a little ball inside to Anton McLaughlin. McLaughlin now in front. He's going to shoot from there. Uh, his some score from Anton McLaughlin. A massive score from the man who has a serious injury doubt. Direct football though, quick ball in and he kicks it on the turn and it's the first water break here after 15 and a half minutes. Four points to Blessing and two to Barton Glass and look, it's been all Blessington really in that first 15 minutes. Yeah, all Blessington. Like if I was... Jonathan Daniels now, I'd be delighted at how, how the game is going. Like, you've had all the possession, you seem to be on the front foot. And up until that kick, I was going to say, if I was Balkan Glass, I'd be delighted to only be a point behind because they've done nothing, really. They've done nothing in that quarter. Now, if you were only a point behind, two, OK, still not the end of the world, but they're hanging on. I think you said it a minute ago, Emmett. They just looked like they were trying to contain there, really. They are, and they're, they're not running them down, but they look tired there, the Balkan Glass. I just look, coming up here, like, looking at... Uh, John McGrath walking up there, he, he, he's gasping for breath, but he's everywhere in Ockram at the minute. Like you, he's trying to buy out fires all over the place here. You're number fifteen. I know he's one of your leaders, but like you mm -hmm. need, we, we need Jason Kennedy. You need the Kevin Murphy's and all to step up now and put the shoulder to the wheel, and especially with the wind in your face in the first half. You know, or, because if they get if they open up a little lead here, Blessington, they could do simply what they done with the Rat New last week, and they just they just kept going because they didn't take the full half the gas at all. Yeah, and I suppose, look, if you're, if you're Brian Heaslip, you're asking your players just what you said, you need to get more men into the game, more men on the ball. If you're Jonathan Daniels now, you have to be saying, we need to go here, we need to, we need to push forward now on this and really drive forward at, at this spot in that team. So it'll be interesting to see, we're ready to rock and roll here again. It'll be a kick out for Mark Jackson. As I said, it's four points to two here in Ockram in the Boom and Pat Farm Higher Senior Football Championship Final of 2021. The defending champions, Barton Glass, need to, need to up their game a little bit at the minute as Blessing Dinner full of confidence right now and they're coming raiding at them. But as we said, it's championship football and there's only two points in it. The kick out will be from Mark Jackson. Jackson has a look around again. Huge kick down to the right to the middle of the field. John McGrath's on. Oh, brilliant take by McGrath. Little nudge of the hips and away he went and the ball is in as far as Adam McHugh with Jack Gilligan is on the case. The ball breaks down. It's into the hands of Paul McLaughlin. McLaughlin gets a hand pass out as far as uh, Dan Coney. Lovely pass by Coney down to Onkyo. He tries to just control it on his, on his toe but it's knocked away and only back as far as Coney. Coney goes diagonal across the field. Anton McLaughlin is out in front. Does really well. Picks the ball up. Didn't put much of a toe under it I think from the look here but a high diagonal ball in Kevin Quinn is on it oh that's well taken back there that's Keen Lee coming out with that ball brilliant take or it's Carl Furlong is it it's Carl Furlong sorry he done really well there but again Barton last played their way into a little bit of bother and they're turned over by Blessing and then Patrick O'Connor comes away with the ball numbers back for Barton last but there's space on the far side Dan Coney is one of those players Gets his pass off out to the far sideline into Jack Cotter. Cotter gives it back to Coney. Oh, it's a good tackle by Pat Burke. He tries to pick it up and gets the ball away. Just boots it along in front of him. Jack Connor, Jack Cotter will win this foot race, but Burke is on his case. Cotter does well and gets the ball back as far as Paul McLaughlin. McLaughlin switches the play to this side to Stephen Bone. Bone gets forward in space in front of Kevin Hanlon again. Hanlon solos forward with the ball. Sean Doody sizes him up but he's gone inside him. A chance here for, Bot or for Blessington to get a score. A chance for Kevin Hanlon to get a score. Kicks this one high and kicks it over the bar. Really well worked score but as we've said 
all the space is in front of the, the two wings and yeah. the two wings in front of the two wing backs and the two wing forwards. Yeah, all the space out here in front of us. Um, that was a super score, though. He had to work hard for that. It was one of the best scores of the game. But everything Bottom Glass are doing at the moment is just a bit slow. It's just a bit one pace. Everything from the kick outs to winning the ball in the middle of the field. They're not moving anything fast. Kick out goes long down the middle again. Again, there's bodies on there, but it's taken by Johnny Kell. He done really well. He was the smallest man of everyone that went for that. He got the ball down to himself and he gets it out as far as Jason Kennedy. Kennedy wears number nine. He's charging up the sideline here. Has a look at his options. Gets the ball back into Johnny Kell. Kell goes long inside. That's a dangerous looking ball. Tried to take it on the chest there, Tommy Kell. A good hand in again by Connell Gallagher into the hands of Paul McLaughlin. Blessing to break it away. Break it down and break away up the field. It's with Dan Coney. Coney steps inside and pops the ball off to Jack Gilligan again there's space for the runners here at Blessington and uh, Barton Das just looked to try and push up but space comes out here step man Kevin Hanlon again Hanlon has a runner inside him as Kevin John Rogers opts not to go for him takes the ball back across the 45 has a look dodges a tackle and pops the ball off out into Owen Kyo Kyo 45 yards out again picks a little ball into space and it's Brian Bowen Bowen has a has the ball right down in the corner, but that's a silly, silly foul for a push in the back from Pat Burke to Brian Bowen was going nowhere. He was in all sorts of trouble on the sideline. It's just a he didn't pull up the handbrake at all, he ran straight into his back. He didn't, but like Sean Doody needs help here. You know, he's getting absolutely dragged up and down this sideline here by Kevin Hanlon. I say Hanlon has a free of Mocko here. I would be switching, I'll even bring out a John McGrath or bring over a Jason Kennedy, get get Ed Doody into the middle of the field where he knows his trade and that's where he does his best work. Patrick O'Connor took the pass there, it's loose though and it breaks down, Kevin Murphy tries to pick it up, Jason Kennedy goes back and tries to pick it up, collides with his own man back there, ball breaks into Patrick O'Connor, chance for O'Connor, oh he skews it off the right, but that was a beast of broken play, but it opened up to be a really good chance for Patrick O'Connor and to get nothing out of it, it looked like a goal chance, but not even to get the point out of it, it was a bit disappointing. Yeah, he just snatched at it a little bit I'd say, and he was probably a bit tired, there was a few bangs going in there, but you know, with a calm head he would have just flicked that over the bar and you know, four points would have been <clears throat> looking like a deficit already he had a little bit more time than he thought as well he did indeed there's 21 minutes on the clock and Dudden the water like a huge kick down the field from Jackson again but again there's huge numbers over there there's two against one John McGrath is outnumbered and Kevin John Rogers and Jack Cotter take the ball it's all blessing in at the minute as they charge forward Cotter on the ball here hand passes it over the head of Billy Cullen gets it to Kevin Quinn Quinn again tries to break the tackle twice Burke just does enough to get his hand in gets the ball to Patrick O'Connor O'Connor kicks this one high and kicks it over the bar another score from play for O'Connor he's doing his captain's part at the minute at six points to two here in Ockram and as I've said at the water break Barton that's just looking a little bit divided of ideas but have to give full credit to Blessing and the way they're playing the game they're on the front foot here oh, like, like in the first game it was six points there that five different scorers you know because lads are off the shoulder and that's the good thing about, about the team there they're all scorers Mark Jackson goes long to the middle of the field again again it's taken though by Kevin Hanlon plucks this one out of the air a huge catch for Hanlon and he's down injured he's taking a bit of a knock underneath that one Chances the physio comes in to yeah, just the blessing that they're, they're winning the, the fights all over the field. That's the, the third kick out they turned over here as well. You know, they're, they're applying pressure everywhere. But, but, but even with the kick out, the choice of kick out is like we're looking here. You've Sean Doody, you've mm -hmm. Kevin Murphy, and Jason Kennedy on this side of the field, and it's kicked to John McGrath with two men on him at the far side. I, I don't understand the thinking behind it. Now, John McGrath is good, but like the chances are a two on one every time yeah. he's not going to come out, and not just the two on one, Emmett. Like no one else within 20 yards of it, you know, it's, it's into space. I just, as you look at this, I'm just, I don't, I don't know if Bogdan Glass, I think, have got their set up wrong. They have two men back in front of the full forward line. But what's doing the damage for Blessington is the runners. Yeah. Uh, they're worrying about the full forward line and Kevin Quinn, I think. The ball is kicked in and as that man Quinn is on it, he's in space, but it's uh, a free... I think you're 100% right there. That, that there's a free the, given the, for something. The wave is coming from the half-backs in the middle of the field and it, they're, they're worrying too much about what's the inside men. Yeah, so if there's two men sitting around the D there nearly the whole match but that's not like it's not ball into the full forward line that's yeah. doing the damage it's all runners coming through and just as I said you need help from Adam Gas here and Sean Doody has been took off and had a work coming in yeah, Sean Doody has gone there. Paddy Burke's come in. In fairness, as we said to Sean Doody, he got no real fair play there. To be. He was getting no cover whatsoever with uh, a, a, blue, a black and blue wave running at him there the whole time. But he's, 
after being taken off with 24 minutes on the clock here, bottom let's get the ball into the hands of Keane Lee. Lee steps around, steps outside, out to Carroll Furlong. Furlong gets the ball to David Gettins. Gettins now solos 45 yards out from his own goal. Bottom let's need to get probably the next score, you'd imagine, but it's a poor kick, a poor decision, and Paul McLaughlin gobbles it up and brings it back down the field. Pressure back on the defensive line here is... Uh, Chris Heaslip goes to ground and Paul McLaughlin keeps his run going. He got, got the ball back there. A heavy shot there and Paul McLaughlin he's still going. Play on, says referee Dara Burke. Ball breaks down. It's into the hands of Tom Burke. Burke gets the ball back to his brother Pat Burke and away come Barton. That's a good turnover for Barton. That's there. Into the hands of Kevin Murphy. Murphy does. Tackle there. Out on the far line by Dan Coney and he's blown for over. Carrying good Good pressure on the ball again. Good pressure. You're having to work harder for your freeze now, all right, than the first few minutes. The long ball into Anthony McLaughlin. There's a good hand in at the right time, though, from the bottom last defence. It's a loose looking ball away as John McGrath picks it up on the run, back in his own 45, gets the ball out as far as Johnny Keogh. Keogh will have to stoop to pick this one up. He does, and it's Kevin Handlin is on him. He tries to get away from Handlin. Play away, says the referee. Pops the ball off to Pat Burke. Burke comes through the traffic again there's huge numbers back for Blessington Blessington get their men back but Barton has have the ball into the hands of Tommy Keogh he's 21 yards out two, three, four men around about it's a free in to Barton that's here it's a free in and again uh, Blessington question in that one but it is, it's a free there was a pull back on Tommy Keogh here and it's a chance for Barton that's just to just to get back within a, a one score I suppose yeah a, bit, a big kick like a really big kick to put yeah. Barton last like they had to work so hard for that chance, like so hard for it. It was a battle the whole way up the field, and um, they could really do with this going over. Keep yeah, going. it's it's a it's a big kick with 25 and a half minutes on the clock. He's 21 yards out. He's about 12 or 13 yards in from the sideline here on this press box side. It's Johnny Kyo. Can he bring it back into three? He gets gets a couple of yards and sneaks it inside. <laughs> <the left> hand. <laughs> <laughs> left hand post. He sneaks it inside that post. It's six points to three here. The three point game in Ockram, as I said, with just about 26 minutes on the clock, including the water break. Jack Sargent will take this kick out. Possession vital now at this stage. Barton has haven't been winning a lot around this middle third, but uh, Blessington go along is huge. It's down on top of Kevin Murphy. You'd fancy him here. Breaks the ball to Chris Heaslip. Gets it to Jason Kennedy. Pops the ball in in front of Adam McHugh. McHugh turns his man Jack Gilligan. Gilligan has a strong hand on him though. Good play there. Gets the ball out as far as uh, the wing forward is. John McGrath out there, McGrath tries to step inside, again Solos has a look, does he pop it off, he does, he pops it off to Billy Cullen, Cullen wearing six, gets up the field, gives the ball to Chris Heaslip, Heaslip gets himself into a shooting position, kicks this one high and kicks this one over the bar as well, six points to four all of a sudden and just as you thought, you know, Barton has had no real ideas, they kick two in a row and it's game on again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, two quick scores. Uh, but like that Blesso kick out, you know, a big loop and high kick out down on top of Kevin Murphy. It's not something I'd be doing now myself. No, Jack Sargent to take this one. Pressure on the kick out again. It's another huge kick down. As we said, it's Pat Burr, Tom Burke is on it. Gets his hand on it. Kevin Murphy wins the break. Barton Glass now just getting a little bit of a grip around the middle third. There's a free and advantage being played. And there's no advantage play on to But Jason Kennedy is blocked down. Brilliant tackle in there by Johnny Keogh and Kevin Hanlon. That's a huge hit and a huge tackle. A huge turnover. A loop and pass though is robbed in by Kevin John Rogers. Back into the hands of the blessing the men. It's... it's Twisting and turning both ways here. It's hard to call anything at this stage. It looked like Blessing them were in the ascendancy. Barton Das have came back into it in the last couple of minutes and Blessing them are in possession. They just calm things down and go all the way back here into defence and get the balls into the hands of Paul McLaughlin. McLaughlin solos and has a look up. Solos again. Again, just decides against giving the ball to the runner. Now he's giving it to the runner. That runner's Craig Maguire. Maguire, again, has men in front of him. One of them is Adam McHugh, all the way back on his own 65 there. But Owen oh, Keogh charges forward. He has a little bit of space. Keogh, he has a good boot. Will he think about kicking it? No. Gets the ball off to Craig Maguire. Maguire, loose looking pass there. Oh, John McGrath done really well there. McGrath right back in his own 45. Huge turnover from the bottom last man. Gets the ball to Kevin Murphy. He gets the ball out to Adam McHugh underneath the stand. And away goes Billy Cullen, 65 yards out from the Herbst end here there's, now the numbers are coming forward for Bottom Das gets the ball into the hands of Chris Heaslip but he doesn't do 
what he should have done didn't take in the possession and it's turned back over and into the hands of the blessing the men and away they come again 28 and a half minutes gone here two point game in Ockram in the senior football championship final Blessington come raiding down the field again ball is in the hands of Patrick O'Connor and Kevin Hanlon has the freedom of this line again like we said before it's still happening Tom Burke size him oh brilliant play by Burke Bottenlass are starting to get their tackles in, winning the turnovers. And away comes Bottenlass with the ball. It's in the hands of Johnny Kyo. Tommy Kyo makes a run inside. He decides against giving it to him. He needs support here now. That support will come from Tommy Kyo. He doesn't give it to him again. Johnny Kyo on the ball in possession. Like we said, it, he solos, he has a look, but there's space on the far side and it's patter work and it's a brilliant pass by Johnny Kyo. He bided his time away. Burke will try and get this one into a scoring position. He'll give it to Tommy Kyo. Kyo has Connell Gallagher on his case. Chance here for a score maybe. Gets the ball back to Chris Heaslip. Heaslip runs in with the ball, gets it to patter work. Back out as far as Tommy Kyo. Kyo kicks this one high and kicks it over the bar. A really well worked score from bottom last they're starting to find their mojo a little bit lads they're starting and you can just see it the difference is those last two attacks Billy Cullen has gone on big runs up the middle hasn't got the ball but is dragging a couple of Blessington lads with him yeah, he just put them out in some lads minds like where's he going they're going to have to follow him look at look at that that's a good score to see here now today well worked went through several hands didn't panic worked it into a score and got it got to the shooter in the right yeah. place as well and that's what it's all about as well Jack Sargent takes the kick out it's huge and again there's a hand on it from uh, Kevin Murphy uh, Tom Burke tries to get a hand in there but it's found its way to Owen Kyo Kyo in the middle of the field underneath the press box here oh just forgets to bring the ball with him and it's robbed off him by Tom Burke as I said these turnovers are starting to go bottom last his way Kevin Murphy gets the ball into the tackle gets the ball into the second tackle he's dragged to the ground here by Owen Kyo and there's a bit of a decision to be made I'd say it's Look at I've never been a fan of the black card, but by the letter of the law, that's a cynical foul. It, it looked it. I'd say he's going to get away with the yellow. He's no, it's black. Yeah, yeah. It's by the letter of the law. That is. Uh, well, he got the arm around kind of the neck nearly as he was pulling them down as well and just hauled them straight down. Oh, and Kyo has just trudged off in front of us, Blessington down to 14, and, and it's very small things these finals can turn. and. and they, if I was Jonathan Daniels I know, I'd be livid with him coming off look where he's after giving a free away right, and taking a black card for it he was, there was no trouble there you know what I mean like he'd still he'd 65 yards of ground yeah, and, and, up, and like. 12 players yeah. back you know, you know so look it's one of those as a county final you don't always think straight in him believe me lads <laughs> alright <laughs> we'll say no more <laughs> 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 I was told that several occasions Mark Jackson hits this but it's a huge kick it's hanging in the air it's not going to go to all it breaks inside Johnny Kyo is on it again a huge number of black and blue jerseys around him but it's a free for over carrying well done to the, bo- the Blessington defence there they just tied up Johnny Kyo and that ball broke as I said with normal time is just about up I'd say by me about 20 seconds to go we'll have a couple of minutes of injury time and the ball is into the events here with Blessington it's six points to Blessington five to Barton last in a pull Satan game it mightn't be the highest scoring game but certainly going from end to end and it's well worth looking in at it's Paul McLaughlin on the ball he's about 50 yards out from his own goal tackled by Adam McHugh but away goes McLaughlin again gets a long hand pass into Jack Gilligan the defender comes across David Gettins look I think he had committed to the tackle is it a black card? Is he evened up here now? Uh, and he, he, he followed through, he took For me, over. that's more of a yellow now. And that's not being... And well, because he committed to the tackle. No, but he committed to the tackle was my thing. He didn't... That it's, he did. it's interesting. Yeah. Look. Just... Yellow card. Let's see. Yeah. And to be fair to him, the ref yeah. so far, he's got yeah. all his calls right. Yeah, and that's like, for me... Well up on the page. For me, that one is right as well, to be honest. I don't... We Nine can get. Apiece. So it's near enough level on all counts, lads. Six points to five, nine frees apiece. It's a big kick here now for Anto McLaughlin. We're 33 minutes, 32 and a half minutes on my clock. So this will be a huge kick. If it goes over, you'll hear the blessing and crowd underneath me here erupting. It's high, it's hanging, but it's not gone. It's gone to the left of the post and it's just gone wide. And perhaps possibly one that needed a half time whistle has gone here in Ockram. For a one point game and a couple of talking points in that one, but look, I suppose if you're bought and that's coming in a point down here after playing playing probably poorly for 25 minutes be, on, your, on your own high standards, you know, you'd have to be happy enough. You'd have to be happy with that now, going in a point down. And I know the wind is not a big factor, but you do have that little bit of a wind in the second half. But I'd be more happy, like, you, you kind of got away with the first 20 minutes. 
you know, by Alton Glass were they looked flat. They took them a long time to get going, and Blessington weren't missing anything. At one point, they only had one wide, and I think six points. So, like, if I was going in a point down now, and I was Alton Glass, I'd be I'd be as happy as I could Absolutely. be. Absolutely, we'll be delighted. Like they made a change there, like, and we were frowning upon it. Like, but Burks come in, he's got on three balls there. He called a bit, a bit of havoc. He's a big unit, you know. We're going back to the blessing and kickouts there. If I was Daniels, I, I'd be cracking up. He's pumping all the kickouts down here and top underneath us to where the big men are. Coney's at the far side of the field, and it's a complete runners. mismatch. Runners. Uh, uh, there's runners over there, but Coney's towering over his man. Like, pump one out on him and try it, you know. And because th- 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 that far side of the field, it's open up, you know, because everyone's stuck into this side. Change it, see what happens. But like, Bottom Glass be definitely, definitely happy got in. As we said before the game, they they scrape through games. They know how to do it. They know how to win. Yeah, look, that's it. We're going to take a break here. We'll be back with the second half of the Boom and Platform Higher Senior Football Championship Final. It's six points to five to Blessing and a cracking game going on here. Make sure and tune back in. Wicklow GEA's Healthy Clubs prioritise areas such as Healthy Eating Mental Fitness Substance Abuse Gambling Awareness Diversity and Inclusion and Critical Incident Planning. For more information, please ring Dave on 87 or email chair.hwc.wicklow at gaa.ie It's a long drive to Croker from here. In ways even longer for the fans. The effort, I can tell you, it's worth it. Even today, I can still hear it. The roar of the hill. It's gonna be something else. We all belong here, in this place, at this time. We belong not because of who we are or where we come from, 
Being here means belonging. Belonging means knowing you're part of a community. A community that has a place for all. Where potential is nurtured. Where individuals become teams. Who honour the legacy of those who went before and strive to build a legacy of their own. Some of us play. Some of us used to play. Some of us never played. We all belong. Belonging means having a voice means being able to say what you think is right. Being listened to. Belonging means respecting each other. Means being there for each other. On the pitch, off the pitch. Belonging means rolling our sleeves up and doing what needs to be done. We all belong, whether it's our first day or our hundredth year. We all belong here because this place belongs to us all. Our GAA, where we all belong. You're very welcome back here to the second half of the Bowman Platform Higher Senior Football Championship uh, final. It's a delicately poised one here between Blessington and Bottenass at six points to five. We're just discussing there at halftime, Bottenass probably the happier coming in. They didn't play to their usual high standards. They've got in at halftime with just a point in it. They have a little bit of a breeze in their back. I don't think it'll be... It'll be much of a, make much of a difference to the way these two teams play, but I suppose if it's tight in the end, it'll give them the option of going long, maybe. That's the only difference. Uh, don't see many changes. One positional there anyway, Patrick on centre forward and Tommy Kyo has gone, um, or Johnny Kyo has gone wing forward and over on Hanlon there. So maybe he might have the legs to try to stay with him, because definitely, I mean, Dodie went off, but Burke's Bork, not going to stay with him up and down that line either. Could be good thinking maybe from Barton as well. Johnny Keogh will probably give Kevin Hanlon a bit to think about as well because he'll come short and win his own ball. He might pin him back a little bit. Yeah, maybe he might do, thinking. yeah. And Barton Lass have set their stall out anyway. They're lining out with seven backs from the start, are they? <laughs> or they'll have a spare man in the but looks like a spare man in the middle. There's only there, five forwards for, for Blessington there. So there's something. Oh, not back. oh yeah. Not back back minutes, it? That's yeah. where the spare man is. So they'll have a go at... Like the first eight minutes of this half now if you were balking that should be You'd have to really go and put the pin the shoulders in. back. Dara Burner referee looks for the ball here as we get ready to rock and roll. I wouldn't rule out a draw either, lads, at the way this is. Alan, our fixtures man, rolls his eyes to heaven, but don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go, umpires just getting back to their post up at the top end here. I think we've everything in order, everything ready to rock and roll here. The second half of our senior football championship final about to get underway. It is underway, the ball is thrown in, there's a tussle underneath. Referee not happy with the way Kevin Murphy grappled with his man, gets the ball, it's quickly taken and it's out to Dan Cooney. Cooney has a look up, drops the ball and picks it up again and away he goes. John McGrath comes back to tackle, Cooney tries to break the tackle, he's fouled by John McGrath, it'll be a free in. And again, another one of those. I mean, like he did so much work to get back, and then just reached in with the wrong hand and went around him. But after running back about thirty yards, there probably to make the tackle. Be interesting to see how this one goes. Now it's about thirty-five yards out here for Anto Medlock. He's about seven or eight yards. It's probably a perfect position for a right-footed kicker. But it'll be interesting to see how it re reacts to the breeze. This one, Medlock has been very good so far. He kicks this one high. It's coming in perfectly. Oh, it's a huge kick from Anto Medlock. Massive kick there against the wind and just to settle Blessington down. Super strike, yeah, absolutely perfect connection and great way for them to start. They'll be delighted with that. And a score, obviously, with the man man down as well, a score as well. It's huge at this stage of the game. Mark Jackson goes long down the middle of the field. It's down on top of uh, Kevin John Rogers, breaks away and it's picked up by John McGrath. McGrath is foul, says Dara Byrne, but gives him the advantage. A long, dangerous looking ball into Tommy Kyo. Kyo, will he get there first? He does, but it's a free back out the field. Oh, I'd say that was still an advantage because Tommy Kyo was on it, but he's brought it back to give the free to John McGrath back out on the 65 here. It'll be taken by McGrath himself. There's numbers over, as there would be. There's, as we said, Owen Kyo is still sitting out. He's 10 minutes here on a black card. The ball is in the hands of Kevin Murphy. Murphy gets the ball back to John McGrath. McGrath fancies his chances from here. That's a dangerous looking ball in. Ball breaks away. It's well broken away by Paul McLaughlin. It's a 45, I'd imagine, there. Looked like McLaughlin got the hand to that. And here comes Mark Jackson up the field for another sojourn. That was a bit of an odd free to take there. Like Jackson had come and told him to stop and go back. And McGrath took it and went short. 
they still, it was 45 yards out, they've, set, they've got a 45, so they're still happy for Jackson to come up and take the 45, you know. Like, and the way he's kicking, it would have brought it back to a one-point game. He was 65 yards out, Helen. 65 yards out, sorry. The first one. That's probably why they didn't bring him up. Right, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, he's, the way he's kicking, the way with, he's that kicking win, with that the wind, there could have been more the chance. He has a 45 now. He's about eight or nine yards in from the sideline here. Mark Jackson, he's two on the board, registered already. The first two scores. <laughs> The first two scores of the game for bottom glass were from the boo of Jackson from long range trees. It'll be interesting to see how he goes here. Looks to have got a good connection. Oh, it's high. He's turned he's, when he's running back to the goal like that. It's a super kick. That's a super kick and it's seven points to six here. It's a one point game again. I'd say that could have been at least 65 or 70 yards in with that one. <laughs> It had to carry. I just had the wrong number. It had to carry. <laughs> it had to carry. It hit the net fairly high at the back. Anyways, Jack Sargent kicks the ball out. Ball breaks in the middle of the field. Who's on it? It's Jason Kendi. It's bottom glasses on it. Is he foul? Play on, says the referee. Kevin Murphy goes down, picks up the ball, turns away from his man, wins his free. And Again, looks to take the ball quickly. He'll go long inside, will he? He does. He hoofs a high ball in, looking for Tommy Keogh inside. Colin Gallagher's in there. Gets the hand on it and breaks it down to Stephen Bowen. Bowen as Blessington look to try and work their way out of trouble here. They're giving themselves a little bit of other Jack Cotters on the ball. Gets it out to Stephen Bowen. Huge numbers around the man on the ball here for Barton. That's Jason Kennedy goes to ground and touches it on the ground, says the referee. I'd say Blessington are breathing a bit of a sigh of relief there because they were in a little bit of bother. I'd say they are. Maybe he did touch on the ground, but he was probably looked like he got a nudge or a trip before it. Stephen Bowen will take this free. Anthony McLaughlin's all the way back in his own 14 here. It's all done with the ball. There's only one player up is Kevin Quinn and there's a couple of spare bottom glass men lurking around in front of him. So they'll do well to get the ball up to Quinn at that end of the field. Ball is up. Played around in the back line, Jack Gilligan takes a heavy hit from Padder Burke, but he gets away, gives the ball to Colin Gallagher, Gallagher and Blessington look to work it out as Anto Madlockland has dropped deep, as I said, into his own 45, gets the hand pass off to Kevin Hanlon, Hanlon is turned by Tommy Keogh, stops his run into the hands of uh, Connell Gallagher, back out to Hanlon now, little one too, and Gallagher just gallops up the field with the ball on his toe, gets it to Patrick O'Connor, it's back into Hanlon now, here he comes again, this number five, he's been a torn in the bottom last side all the way, but he just goes away from the goal, gives the ball to Brian Bowen back out to Patrick O'Connor as Blessington look to work a score here they're in possession they're holding the ball as well while they're down to 14 men so it's a win-win for the Blessington men Bottom last need to turn it over if they're to take full advantage of this black card it's a uh, Patrick O'Connor comes all the way across the field with the ball, gives it back as far as Jack Gilligan. Gilligan passes the ball all the way over to Stephen Bone here. Bone now looks up, has Jack Cotter in front of him. Cotter has a look at his options, solos and solos again and kicks a long foot pass all the way across as far as Connell Gallagher. And it just looks like Blessington are just trying to see out this black card at the minute, lads. Uh, Patrick O'Connor has the ball on his toe here. Solos and has a look, now goes long, goes direct, Kevin Quinn is inside, oh beautiful take by Quinn inside, they worked it really well, in fairness we were kind of wondering what was happening there but Quinn is on the ball, he's 14 yards out. Kick there from Kevin Quinn, it's high and it's over the bar, is it no, it's gone to the left of the post and wide, there was a cheer went up from underneath and it's just gone away to the left of the post. And wide, there's five and a half minutes on the clock here. It's seven points to six still. A chance gone a big in there for the blessing. The men ball breaks inside. Patter Burke gets to it, a huge hit there, but Burke comes out on the good side of it. Gets the ball into John McGrath. McGrath is about 22 or three yards out. Little hand pass inside as far as Chris Heaslip. Heaslip on the angle. Oh, tried to pick a pass across to Tommy Keogh. Colin Gallagher picked it off. Gets the ball away and down the field with it. It's uh, Kevin Hanlon is on the ball. Gets it to Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor comes away up the field with it. Pat Burke just got a tug on his jersey. There's an advantage to the referee to play away. Advantage is gone as Patrick O'Connor. Connor finds his way across as far as Anthony McLaughlin. McLaughlin on the raid up the field now. He had dropped really deep from his position inside his foul, says uh, Dara Byrne. There's an advantage of Crowan. It'll be an advantage here. And it's, it's a soft, silly free to give away if you're bottom Again, glass. Again, a silly free. He's like, he's, what, 45 yards out there. Bottom glass had plenty of men back. And you'd wonder, uh, you'd wonder, like, it just was a kind of a tired-looking tackle just to kind of pull him back. Oh, and Kyo is looking to get ready to come back in. Here's the free is taken quickly in as far as Kevin Quinn. Quinn drops the shoulder, goes to ground, get up, says the referee, and play on, gets the ball back to Dan Coney. Oh, lovely step inside by Coney. Kicks this one high. Oh, it's off the post. Players didn't react. Carl Furlong, and he's back to that ball. Falls into the hands of uh, 
Falls into the hands of Kevin Quinn and Kamiha de Mortal Sin there, a couple of the bottom last backs that were walking away, the Tahoe's gone over the bar, could have ended up in the net. Yeah, they were lucky to get away with just the point there, I'd say, the bottom last backs. Um, a couple of them definitely turned their back on that one. Mark Jackson ready to take the kick here. Owen Kyo will be back on the field in 30 seconds. Jackson drives a huge kick down, looking for Pader Burke. A big fist on it there by Anto McLaughlin. Breaks down and it's into the hands of Jason Kennedy. He gives it to Kevin Murphy. As Barton last look to come raiding. Now again, it's a long searching ball inside. Oh, John McGrath takes it on the turn. Beautiful take by McGrath. Chance here for Barton last. Surely, oh, is he tackled? Is he about? Get ups is the referee. McGrath not happy with that one. Play away. I think he was right enough to ref there. He looked for the free. He didn't get it. He got bottled up. Ball is in the hands of Craig Maguire. He gets it to Kevin Hanlon. A score here now would be huge for Blessington after that turnover. Paul McLaughlin is on the ball. Gets the ball into Dan Cooney. Cooney has a look up. Only goes backwards with Hido to Paul McLaughlin. McLaughlin gives it to Jack Cotter over to Anto McLaughlin as Johnny Kyo looks to try and turn him over. He doesn't though. Good strong play by McLaughlin. Gets the ball to Jack Gilligan. Away comes Gilligan. Patrick O'Connor is outside him. Gilligan cuts back in again through numbers. Chance gets the ball to Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon pops it off here into the hands of Kevin John Rogers. Rogers excels up the field with the ball, gets it as far as Kevin Quinn. It looked like a tackle from behind with the boot. It is a tackle from behind with the boot, and it's a free in. Oh, and Kevin, Kevin Quinn now in the second half they're going direct to him they're getting him the ball they didn't do much in the first half with the win but they're going direct to him now and he's like he's getting free he's getting marked he's pulling scores you know the hard mark Owen Kyo comes back in now Oh, and Kyo back on the field here it's a free to Blessington a free for Anthony McLaughlin this, he's kicked a, a difficult one just before it'd be a huge kick this to put them three points up because three points in a match of this nature is a huge lead I would imagine I would, yeah at this stage it would be I mean Blessington must be delighted with that start like what nine minutes in and if this goes over they're out to three points nine minutes on the clock Anthony McLaughlin he's about 22 or three yards out he gets the kick he wraps the bow around but this one has gone to the right of the post and wide it's just didn't curl enough for the, the big Blessington man and it's still a two point game here in Ockram it's a dangerous, dangerous lead I know we're a long way out from the finish but You'd like to be tacking on those scores when they're working so hard for him. You can nearly see there with John McGrath, like he was looking for the penalty. He turned back into three lads. Did he had to more concentrate more and go for the front post there? He could have had a goal. Boxed yeah. it over, even ball breaks inside. It's into the hands of Adam McHugh. McHugh tries to get away from Jack Gilligan. Good tackling from Gilligan, though. Stands his man up. McHugh twists and gets the ball back out as far as Kevin Murphy. Murphy does. He's bottled up by Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon having a huge impact on this game. It's back out as far as uh, Johnny Kyo. Kyo pops it off into Pader Burke. Burke has a look at his options kicks the ball with the right foot it's high it's gone to the left of the post and wide and a wide, another wide for Barton last they could have done with a score there they've only two in the match they've six points on the board so that'll tell you they're pretty much living off scraps to be fair to the blessing in defence they are yeah I mean even going back to that one with John McGrath like the, the Kevin Quinn point it broke off the post and he knocked it over the bar John was probably looking for the goal there fair enough but there was a, an easy mark for him if he wanted to take his point Ball breaks in the middle of the field again. It comes out. Uh, Chris Heaslip goes down, but he goes down on the man on the ball. He puts the boo in at the wrong time. It's another silly free, we'd have to say. Ten and a half minutes on the clock here. Two point game. Eight points to Blessington. Six points to Barton Das. And here come Blessington again. The ball is in the hands of Brian Bone. Gives it back to Anthony McLaughlin. Blessington looking to bridge a 38 year gap here in Ockram today. 1983 was their last championship. The foot pass into Craig Maguire from uh, Anthony McLaughlin as the runners come. It's on. Kyo just back in after his little break gets the ball on his right foot kicks this one high there's no big cheer going up it's gone to the right of Boston wide and that's another chance to put bad, three bad between them there, bad bad wide and Kevin Quinn going off his shoulder all he had to do was look up pop it to the man that had the momentum in the running and like, he could have been in for goal yeah it's another opportunity gone a beg in there for blessing and you just imagine they'd have to be They'll have to try and get four in this because Barton Ness will be ever dangerous to the final whistle. A long ball down the field, breaks in the middle. Johnny Kyo is going to get to this first. Is he pushed? No, so the referee play away and it's back there is Anto McLaughlin. They've done really well. Or Paul McLaughlin gets it to Anto McLaughlin. Out to Dan Coney and away come blessing them with the ball again. They just seem to have the measure of the Barton last attack at the minute. Well, we've seen how it turned in the first half. It's Jack Cotter gets the ball, gives it across to Kevin John Rogers. 11 and a half minutes on the clock here in Ockram. Space again for Kevin Hanlon and he seems to be finding space all over the field steps inside Johnny Kyo does really well gets the ball out as far as Craig Maguire Maguire looks for Kevin Quinn Quinn goes to ground but wins the ball turns he's surely fouled he is fouled 
and they're having all sorts of trouble with this Kevin Quinn man in there. As I did say before the game, is the, the big bearing in this, this game is the two number 14s. Who, which 14 can stand up, get the most ball and do the most damage and at the minute it's Kevin. It's Kevin Quinn and the right ball is going into him as well, blessing in the ring, very cute about how to work the ball to him. To be fair, there's no real ball of quality going into that inside forward line and bottom last season. Four or five balls that McHugh was got in the first half and the second half. He got him nearly 40, 45 yards out. The last one over here, he got 40, 40 yards out. He ended up over on the stand side again to push them away. They're getting them away from goal, shepherding them out. Anthony McLaughlin kicks this one. He fires it high up. It's not going to go wide. It's dropping in. Then there's a box on it from Owen Kyo. Gets it back out to Kevin Quinn. Quinn is in a shooting area, but pops a pass off to Craig Maguire. He gets it back out to Anthony McLaughlin. Carl Furlong tries to get out to him, tries to get the block on him. He kicks this one high. The cheer from the stand, I'll tell you. It's a three point game in Ockram. They've worked it really well. They've done it. It's Paul McLaughlin. I thought it was Anthony. He went all the way up the field. He didn't quite hit the free the way he'd like, but the one from play is good, and it's three points in it here. 13 minutes on the clock there's a long way back here for Barton Lass things will have to change dramatically for them at the minute because it's all blessing then again yeah and Barton Lass about one point this half after 13 minutes and 8 of those minutes give or take with when they were down 14 men hand on the ball there from Kevin Murphy just in and off oh Pader Burke just hands it off and gives it straight to Craig Maguire Maguire says thank you very much pops it over as far as Kevin Hanlon Hanlon gets the ball into the hands of uh, Paul McLaughlin Anthony McLaughlin is right back beside him now he's dropped way down the field no ill effects of the injury last week he's having a huge burn on this game Anthony McLaughlin to be fair to him Paul McLaughlin's on the ball 50 yards out from his own goal gives it out here to Jack Cotter Cotter wearing number 25 he started this game he drops the shoulder inside Pat Burke a good tackle from Burke and it's knocked away from by Jason Kennedy Kennedy is dragged back though by Jack Cotter it's a turnover it's a chance for Bottenlass to launch an attack he goes short across the field and it's in to Adam McHugh McHugh way out from the goal he's 70 yards out so is John McGrath McGrath though breaks the first tackle solos far gets to the 45 talk about having a shot again there's not much support coming off him it does now with Adam McHugh McHugh gets to the top of the D he's tackled and he touches the ball on the ground it's a free out to Blessing and it all the little the little 50-50s are going blessing this way now oh, all going blessing this way that's twice in the last two attacks Bolton has just ran into two or three blessings and men have been turned over Blessington on the ball here it's uh, Anton McLaughlin gets a hand passes and again it's that man Kevin Hanlon is in all sorts of pay why they haven't put someone on him to stop him he, maybe he just can't be stopped he gets the ball into Kevin Quinn Quinn is on the 21 he, again there's three or four men come to him a silly foul there by a silly, silly foul there again. He's gone nowhere. He's out on the sideline and it, you know, Chris Heaslip dives into that tackle. No need to do it. Yeah, like he's out on the far, out over on the stand side, turning out towards the line, only about five yards in and kind of dives at him to foul him. I mean, if you're the forward there, you're delighted being fouled out there. Again, it's a chance here. This time it's... Anto Lachlan, is it? I think it's Anto, yeah, it's Anto McLaughlin going to kick this one off the right foot, tries to swing it in. Oh, this could be huge. Mark Jackson punches it from under his crossbar. Ball comes to uh, Patrick Burke. Ball breaks away and it's into the hands of the blessing of the man. Man goes to ground again. There's heavy plunging going on, but recycled back out to Kevin John Rogers. Rogers at the top of the D. Uh, tackles go in, but he does enough to get the ball to Kevin Hanlon. He gets the ball back out to McLaughlin, who gets the ball to Kevin John Rogers. Is there a chance for a shot from Rogers here? There is, you know. He kicks this one high and it's gone to the right of the post and wide and all the momentum with Blessington is still only a three point game here you sort of have yeah. to reiterate that you'd have to imagine you know, at this water break that Barton Lass will probably get five good minutes before it's over well uh, that's it like you're just looking for they got their wave about five or six minutes before the end of the first half but Mark Jackson I'd say is happy enough that that one went wide I think it was a ball dropped right into his yeah. into the chest there he could have caught but could have caught and he could have come back out and luckily there's a bit of a scramble around there and the ball broke away but you have Dan Kelly coming in here now um, for Barton Glass we'll see now in a minute who's going out but like the, la the last Barton Glass raid up here again McHugh got the ball handled on the ground but he was 38 yards out again like he just cannot get into his scoring in position yeah, so and they're, they're himself, pushing Tommy, him out so himself, Tommy Kill, McGrath like you know, as I said, McHugh got that ball out 60 yards, hand passed it to John McGrath. Yeah. The two lads that you want close to the goal to try and get scored. So, as the water break goes, there's a real atmosphere in Ockram Day. Huge crowd here as well, to be fair. The blessing the lads are getting into the huddle, but they're hoping they'll be the, the one of the last. Well, they'll be hoping for club championship, but they'll be hoping it's one of the last of the year in the... 
in the current championship anyway. They're three points to the good here. A huge 15 minutes coming for these Blessington men, you know. We've said it down the years sometimes. They can, they're susceptible to a comeback near the end of games, but they've put themselves in a really good position here now. They have, yeah. Um, I know this... You, you might regret saying this now at this stage of the game, but I, the way that match is going, it's hard to see Bolton Glass winning this without a goal. Just the way the last 15 minutes are after going. There's the substitution in. Adam McHugh has gone off. That's a big call. I know he was out from the goal, but he was winning ball. There's lots of lads. Well, well, Daniel Kelly is coming in, of course. That's the other option. It gives him another option, another chance. But Mark Jackson will take this kick out. Now, as we said, a huge last 15 minutes in the Wicklow Senior Football Championship final here. As Mark Jackson goes short out as far as David Gettins. Gettins carries the ball to the 45. He has a look. He's heading for the 65. Again, needs support. Kevin Murphy offers himself up, gets the ball to Murphy. Murphy in the middle of the field gets the ball out to John McGrath. There's an advantage accruing for something I didn't see there. Might have been a bit of a late tackle on Kevin Murphy. Ball comes back through the hands here of Billy Cullen into John McGrath. Huge block down by Jack Cotter. And away come Blessing and there's a chance here for Blessing to break smartly down the field. Kevin Quinn is out in front of his man. Owen Kyo offers offers it up to him. He's 45 yards out by the time he gets it though. Quinn has a look, pops a little pass inside to Patrick O'Connor. Has a chance tries to drill one with outside the boot but only into the grateful hands of Daniel Kelly but Kelly is all the way back in his own 45 little one two with Jason Kennedy huge pressure on the ball again from Blessington they're stopping Barton that's getting ahead of steam up but here comes Billy Cullen Cullen solos with the ball pops it off to John McGrath McGrath solos with this one gives it to Pader Burke Burke for, uh, 65 yards out tried to hop the ball there was no hop there but he gets it into the hands of Pat Burke Burke goes long and diagonal looking there's numbers back but falls into the hands of Chris Heaslip chance for Heaslip on the run to kick this one high and kick it over the bar two point game and you know, Barton has to probably throw off the shackles now. This is going to be a cracking finish, lads. It will, yeah. It'll be brilliant. I mean, even there, we had, like, Blessington had three spare men back inside the 45 just before they got to kicking that ball in. And in fairness, you have to take a chance. It broke well for them, and it was a good score off the left. Nine points to seven here in Ockram now in the boom and platform higher senior football championship final. It's Blessington with the nine. It's Barton last with the seven. Long kick down the field again, breaks in the middle of the field again. Blessington win it. It's on Kyo that wins it. Kyo looks to try and get rid of a tussle between him and Kevin Murphy. Play away as the referee, they've won again. Johnny Kyo goes back and picks up the ball. There's no free given, no quarter asked or given here. Johnny Kyo gets away with the ball, wins his free. It's a free into Barton. Lass. The crowd are really getting involved in this one now. It's a long, high, dangerous looking ball in on top of Paderborough. Ball breaks out again to Chris Heaslip. Heaslip in the danger area, went to try and Go for a, a Ronaldo finish, but he's got a 45. And by the way, Mark Jackson has been kicking all day. You'd be happy enough to get a 45 here. He's been fairly accurate. I mean, that that's two in a row there. Bottom glass have just taken a chance, said fake it, and they've thrown a the ball in on top. And it's two of them have broke well for uh, was Chris Eastlip. Yeah. yeah, look, it's direct, I suppose. Look, you're into the last into the last 10 or 12 minutes of a county final. You're a couple of points down as well. You throw caution to the wind, yeah. you know. This is a massive you, kick now. You can... You can have game plans for everything, but you're very seldom organised for this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, very similar to the first half where Blessington were going so well and then it just the momentum just shifted. If this goes over... Chance for Mark Jackson. His familiar pose steps up to this one. Does he strike? Oh, he's caught it really well. It's high and it's straight over the bar. That's his fourth point of the day, I think. And it's four out of eight here now. He's really kept Barton Lass in the hunt with his long range kicking. It's nine points to eight. One point game here in Ockram. I've 20 minutes, 20, nearly 21 minutes on the clock, including the water break. We're getting down to it now, lads. We have to keep the throw right. We could be here for another 10 or 15. Yeah, a long kick from Jack Sargent. Ball breaking in the middle of the field. Lots of men around it, but it's Johnny Kyo gets the ball. He's pushed in the back. Momentum now with Barton Glass as they come raiding, looking for their 24th Wicklow senior football title. Can they get it? Are they calling Jackson? No, Johnny Kyo takes the ball, gets it in as far as Chris Heaslip. He pops it off to Billy Cullen. Cullen now, 45 yards out underneath the stand. A heavy shot between the two there, between Tommy Kyo and Colin Gallagher. Both men go to ground. The ball goes wide, and Blessington will be happy enough with that just to take the sting out of this bottom. That's momentum for a minute, Colin. Yeah, I think so. Bottom glass were, uh, really had the tails up there. Um, we were just wondering there. There was for a second it looked like they might have called Jackson up for that one. He might get a chance at a 65, yeah. 
A long ball down the field from Jack Sargent. White jerseys underneath it is taken by Tom Burke. This time a huge catch by him. Gets the ball and gives it back to John McGrath. McGrath has a look. He was going for the long ball in, but he's given it off to Padder Burke. McGrath steps inside. Beautiful play by McGrath. Gets the ball into Jason Kendy. Kendy kicks this one. But it's gone to the right of the post and wide. It was a well-worked move, but the finish just wasn't there. And but again, it's all bottom glass here. It's down into that town end. Yeah, it's funny. You just since the water break, you know the way those water breaks can just break your momentum. Oh, since oh. that water break, just just the momentum has shifted. But also, it just looks like Blessington from the water break have had two men back. It's like they were going for mm -hmm. shutting up shop. Shutting yeah. up shop, and you know you don't bring in an experienced team like that, Hunty, I suppose. Will be my thinking of it. It's Jack Sargent kicks this one long again. There's numbers on. Oh, it's taken by Jason Kennedy. Kennedy does really well again. The ball doesn't hop for him though. Gets the ball in. Johnny Kyo tries to get to it first. Uh, Pat Burke is there. Tom Burke is there. But it's Patrick Burke comes away with the ball for Barton as he's fouled out in the middle of the field. Looked like he took a bit of a knock to the face there. It's a free in. The took physio. A bit of a knock to the face. There wasn't a whole lot in it there, but like. The, the keeper there again, that three kick outs in a row they've lost, but like Jason Kennedy and uh, Ke Kevin Murphy were 2 on 1 two one one over there. Big men over on Ritos again, and they're not using them. Yeah, look, you know, I think I said this before, we were coming to end a few minutes. Like, you have to bring the two McLaughlins out here and stand them under us or under the stand and yeah. kick the ball out on them it is, and just get possession now if you're blessing yeah. them. You know, it's all very well dropping them back in and covering the house, but you know, the momentum now is with. You know, a, tr a traditional team, you have to just yeah, see yeah. it out. There's a blood sub there as Tygo Toll comes in for Patrick Burke. He did have a bit of a knock to the face. I'm sure he'll be back in. It's Barton Glass now just looking to try and get themselves back into this game. It's nine points to Blessing and it's eight points to Barton Glass here. Blessington now are kind of hanging on a little bit here. They need to weather the storm as the Barton Glass men come down the field at them. It's into the hands of uh, Johnny Kyo, Kyo 65 yards out, has a look, gives the ball back to Jason Kennedy. Kennedy gives the ball to Ty O'Toole. O'Toole steps around with the ball, gives it to Johnny Kyo. Kyo looks up and looks for Tommy Kyo in there again. Colin Gallagher's all over his case. Brilliant play by Gallagher. He's been superb in there all day. Knocks the ball away, gets it hand to McLaughlin. McLaughlin looks to get the ball out of his defence there. Does well. Hand passes it on Kyo. It's a loose one though. Kyo takes it at the second attempt. Daniel Kelly tries to tackle him. Kevin Hanlon on the ball. Gives it back to on Kyo. Blessington now just looking to take the sting out of Barton. That's a bit, but they're under pressure to try and get the ball out of their own. 65. Good play from on Kyo. Gets the ball to Kevin John Rogers into the hands of Connell Geller and it's away to Dan Coney and Brian Bone is in all sorts of space. Out comes uh, out comes Carl Furlong though, just does enough to halt his progress. Loose looking hand pass though, finds his way to Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor gets the ball out as far as Anton McLaughlin. He's made his way up to about 30 yards out. Looks for the hand pass inside to Kevin Quinn. Gives it back to McLaughlin. Does he fancy his chances? No. Gets the ball to Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon tries to step inside the tackle. Does step inside the tackle. Play on to the referee. Kind of look for the free. It's a loose pass there. Is away come Barton. That's with the ball. It's into the hands of Kevin Murphy. He wins no free either. He's probably looking for one. But to get the ball in through their hands and it's in the hands of John McGrath here with 25 minutes on the clock it's a one point game in Ockram Barton Glass comes steaming down the field with John McGrath to him a little pass inside a good pass inside oh brilliantly taken by Tommy Kyo a high tackle an advantage given This has he kicked this it's high it's drifting across the goal and it's boxed wide it's a free in it's a free for an advantage here it's a tough free but Brilliant pick up there by Tommy Kyo. I'll give him this. He's Conal Gallagher has been all over him all day, but he's still he's still a dangerous little corner forward. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a super pick up ball bobbling in just as as John McGrath gave the pass. We were thinking had he you know just dro dribbled it along the ground a little bit, but uh, that was a super pick up. It's a, it's a big free now in the context of this match. It's Daniel Kelly who came on is going to kick this one. Yeah. Yet, so it is, it's a man. big it's a big kick for him as I said uh, Patrick Burke is back in Tygo Tool has gone off on the blood sub a chance for this to level it he kicks this one high oh it's a huge kick oh it's right on the crossbar there's a fist on it from Anton McLaughlin breaks away Paul McLaughlin's in a foot race with Johnny Kyo out there it'll go right to the sideline he picks it up he does well gets through two tackles huge play by Paul McLaughlin ball breaks down though again there's a huge scrum of players over there there's a boo on it and it comes away it's into the hands of uh, Dan Coney Coney picks it up at the second attempt gets away with the ball gets it to Patrick O'Connor Blessington have numbers up on the far side here Owen Kyo is on the ball 
Solos and has a look. Solos again and has a look. Again, he just tries to hold up the point of the attack. Anton McLaughlin gets it back into the hands of Owen Kyo. Kyo pops off a pass to Patrick O'Connor. Can Blessington find a score? A score for them now would be huge, you'd imagine. It's in the hands of Jack Cotter. It's back to Patrick O'Connor. He's happy enough to play with it there. Gets the ball off to Kevin John Rogers. He's tackled. He goes to ground. He's under pressure, but he gets the ball off to Jack Cotter. He does enough into the hands of Patrick O'Connor. I think these blessing lads don't realise there could be up to seven or eight minutes left in this one still. There's five of normal time, so it's a bit early to be playing ball around the middle of the field. Jack Cotter's on it. Gets the ball to Connell Gallagher. Gallagher fumbles it, picks it up at the second attempt. Steps around the tackle of Paderborough into the hands of Dan Coney. Coney passes it off. It's loose stone. It's into the hands of Paderborough. There's danger here. Johnny Keo comes raiding down the field. He only has his brother Tommy with him. Passes it off as far as Chris Heastep. He gets it to Tommy Keo. Keo again Jinx looks inside back to Johnny Kyo back in as far as Pat Burke Burke now wearing 26 oh he kicks this one away to the left off the boat out to the left of the post and wide and just probably the wrong decision after the turnover they could have done with score the wrong decision they'd done so well there turned that ball over they'd worked it through um, the two Kyo's had done well to hold it up and just a little bit of a rush of blood to the head, I'd say, on the left foot. Change there now, Kevin John Roger coming off and Milton coming on. The man you'd really want to pull out with your locker now to try to secure a game and maybe get you a score as well. David Bootman is in, Kevin John Rogers off, huge shift put in by Rogers there, he's been on an awful lot of ball and this, as we look underneath is here, we've Anthony McLaughlin, Owen Kyo and David Bootman underneath this kick out, I think they might have heard what we were talking about, long ball down, it breaks and the honey breaks as far as Kevin Murphy, he gets the ball out as far as Tom Burke into Daniel Kelly, Kelly is a runner outside him as Billy Cullen has gone up the line, ball is into Tommy Kyo, Kyo for a minute gets a bit of breathing space on Connell Gallagher, he kicks this one, it's high, it's hanging in the air, it's over the bar! What a score from Tommy Kyo to level the county final. A massive score. As I said, he's had a, a pretty torrid afternoon on Connell Gallagher. He's been all over him. First time he gets a little bit of space. That's a mark of a serious footballer to do that. That was some, some score. <laughs> some strike, yeah. He gave it that air anyway. It went up so high. But it's these kickouts. It's the kickouts that are keeping Bolton in it mm. looked like a push but away comes Paul Midlock Anthony Midlock Paul Midlockton with the ball or Anthony Midlockton sorry underneath he wins a free that's a huge free for them to win looked like Bolton last had that ball but Blessington have turned it over they need a score from somewhere now Blessington Cooney off Shannon yeah Martin Shannon Martin Shannon is in and Dan Cooney goes off as the changes are being rung all around the field. Anton McLaughlin looks to go short to this one. He does go short back to Jack Cotter. Gives the ball to Martin Shannon. He'll look and gives the ball across the field as far as Stephen Bone. Blessington looking to try and get a score from somewhere. The momentum has been with Barton last now. We've 29 and a half minutes on the clock here with the water break included. So we've a good four or five minutes left in this one. Don't go anywhere. It's Anthony McLaughlin. Uh, Paul McLaughlin charges forward. Gets the ball into the hands of David Boopman. The look for Kevin Quinn. Quinn is on the ball, 14 yards out, turns inside Keane Lee, turns, oh good tackle by Carl Furlong, gets his hand in and it's a 45, that's a very good tackle there because he was gone. He was gone, <laughs> he had upon the afterburners and he had left two lads for dead, and a vital, vital touch, because if he hadn't got the touch he could have pulled the free as well, and that's black card material there as well. Yeah, a huge chance though now from the 45, can Blessington nail this to bring this match right down to the wire, minute and a half in normal time I'm thinking. If there is one weakness in the best inside, I think it's that they have no real set piece, they have no Jackson, you know. Here but comes Paul Midlockland. It's Paul Midlockland yeah. steps up to this one. You can cut the tension, the air here in Ockram with a knife. Paul McLaughlin steps up, kicks this one long. It's a huge kick from McLaughlin. Oh, what a kick from McLaughlin. A massive kick from the centre. Anyway, I'll tell you. <laughs> a massive kick from McLaughlin. It's 10 points to Blessington, 9 to Barton. That's, that's a huge kick. Come at the hour, come at the man. Are they about to bridge a 38 year gap here? Is there another play in this Barton dance team? We could have three or four minutes left in this one. Jackson goes long down the field. It's huge kick down the field. It's attacked by all comers. Kevin Murphy goes and it's in the hands of Johnny Kyo. Kyo pilfers the ball somehow out of a crowd. Gets the ball off to Kevin Murphy. Murphy gets the ball outside as far as Tom Burke. Here come Barton as with Billy Cullen. Cullen on his left foot. Fancies his chances. Kicks it high and kicks it over the bar. The centre back goes up the field. What a game of football we're having here in Ockram. 31 and a half minutes on my clock. Normal time is 
nearly up. It's 10 points all. And there's huge pressure on this Blessington kick out now. They have to, I think if you're Blessington, you nearly have to go short here and try and hold possession. Yeah, yeah that was some score by Billy Cullen. He took a chance. You could see him going from a long way back. And Jack Sargent goes long out to the middle of the field. There's numbers underneath from both sides. Ball breaks. It's in the hands of Blessington. Martin Shannon has the ball. Gets it to Anto McLaughlin. McLaughlin gives the ball out to Kevin Hanlon. Is there another lung bursting run in Hanlon? Gives it to Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor about 60 yards out. Pops a little pass into Brian Bone. Takes it back from. Gets the ball to David Bootman. Bootman about 40 yards out. Steps inside. The numbers are back from bottom. That's the legs are tired and weary. There's space on the far side for Kevin Hanlon. Hanlon has Padder Burke after him. Dangerous time to foul, but it's in the hands of Kevin Quinn. Quinn kicks this one high. He's delighted with it. He's happy with it, is he? It's over the bar. It's Kevin Quinn. What a score from Kevin Quinn. What a game we're having here in Ockram. 32 and a half minutes on the clock now. We'll see what had it. We're in injury time. We'll see. We'll see what injury time we have to play. Next possession is vital. Can... It's gone short to David Gettins. Can Barton Lass get down the field? Can Blessington stop them at source here? Do we have a draw on the cards is the next question. But Billy Cullen comes raiding down the field again. Cullen has a look up, passes the ball outside as Barton Lass look to try and fashion one more chance. It's Johnny Keogh gets the ball. It's Pilfer from him. Kevin Keogh. Quinn has it and Quinn is fouled. And it's a free to Blessington just at the right time, you'd imagine. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the last two plays there, Kevin Quinn involved. Um, Alan was just saying that you, they, he did some running to get on that ball it's like for, so, for a young lad like he just wanted to get on that ball and it was hanging up there for <laughs> but where he got ball. to have the confidence to go for that score at that time in the county final that was a huge kick but he had made a run out underneath us here and Boatman didn't give it up he went he looped the whole way back out around unseen I know people at home can't see it but what he's after doing there and if that comes to be the match winner he had to come out here overturning the ball as well and like we did say it's, it's the number 14 today that's going to stand up and one of them has gone off a ball and the other one really is standing up now. he's a fabulous fabulous talent we have no word yet on what had the time there is. I didn't hear anything yet, but Blessington are in possession of this ball. They need to trade with their life. Whatever time is left, 38 years might seem like a long time. This next minute and a half or two minutes will seem even longer. It's a free to Patrick O'Connor. O'Connor, the captain, has the ball. Underneath, you can hear the blessing and crowd just calling nicely for the referee to blow the match. Craig Maguire's in possession, gets the ball back as far as Connell Gallagher. Gallagher gives the ball out as far as uh, Stephen Bone into the hands of Martin Shannon. Shannon gives the ball all the way back. Is that Kevin Quinn back there? I think it is. Quinn has on the ball. Jack Cotter has the ball. The referee has a look at his watch. It's into the hands of Patrick O'Connor. It's all over. The final whistle is gone. 38 years of heart has ended for the Blessing of Men. They've won this match by 11 points to 10. A massive victory for the Blessing of Men. Barton last threw everything I had in that last quarter, but it's all over. And scenes of pure joy here underneath us as the Blessing of Players and Mentors celebrate. What a victory. What a game and what a last quarter from both sides, lads. Oh, yeah. I mean, even the last five minutes there on its own um, was super football, I think. I don't think Barton last can have any complaints, probably, I think, over the... 60 minutes like Blessington played the better football I think from start to finish in patches so but uh, some finish though and fair play to Kevin Quinn that was uh, took a lot of bottle to do that and want that ball look at, they have been the team of the campaign we've said it they've they, they been a joy to watch their panel their everything their, their, their football and their, their style of football the brand that he's been absolutely excellent to look but fair play to Jonathan and his backroom team they've done some great great work great great work indeed and as we said And just as we see, Patrick O'Connor is going to lift this cup. Our county secretary, Chris O'Connor, will be a happy woman this evening with that one. Um, like I said, 11 points to 10 here. A massive, massive victory for the Blessing Men. A huge score from Kevin Quinn there at the end. Looked like Billy Cullen was bringing us to a replay. But what a finish to the game and what a brilliant game of football. Thoroughly deserved by Blessing. They went through the championship unbeaten. And uh, they've won four or four really tight matches as well, which you have to give them credit for. Um, look, thanks a million to everyone for tuning in here. Thanks to Stephen, Kieran, to Carmack and Alan here for today. And thanks to everyone at home that listens in that makes this thing work. It's been a brilliant year on both hurling and football fronts. Really enjoyable for us. And uh, blessing then are the senior football champions for 2021. Well done to them. We're going to stay alive for the... Uh, presentation so we'll talk to you soon thanks a million
it's a long time since Blessing has got the Miley, so we, we won't be long. First of all, I would like to thank our ground staff, Dennis Mang and Johnny Dunn and all the stewards, for their hard work all year. Uh, for the last two years, we haven't had crowds, and it's great to see the crowds on the pitch today. So, well done to Blessing and Barton as supporters, and the supporters of all other clubs during the year. We would also like to thank CCC for all the work they've done all year, and last year, obviously, a trying year in the circumstances. So, well done to Paul, Colm, and the CCC. Um, to Barton Lass, last year, you are great champions. Fantastic champions, and, and the kick of a ball in it today could, go, could have went either way, so well done to Barton, that's a round of applause for him. I would like to thank our referee, Dara Bourne. 24 years of age, lads and ladies, 24 years of age, he refereed his first senior football final and I, and I think after today's performance and all year he'll be refereeing loads more. Well done to Darrow. He's <laughs> his umpires and linesmen. And this year was the first year I think in many years we have a lady official, fourth official. So well done to all involved. Um, We would also like to thank our sponsors of the Senior Football Championship, Boom Platform Hire. Without the sponsors, we'd be going nowhere in this county. So I'd like to thank our sponsors, Boom Platform Hire. Thank you very much. I think 1983 is a long time for Blessing in football not to be winning, but I will do the player of the match first. And I'll ask our sponsor here to present player of the match. Kevin O'Halloran. Kevin O'Halloran. Now, before I present the cup, there's one lady here, a true blue, Chris O'Connor. I would like to ask her to, to present the cup. First of all, first of all, she's a Wicklow woman, but also a blessing woman. So well done, Chris. Small few thank yous to do. Um, firstly, just to thank the county board, even with all the restrictions this year, the amount of work they put in to get championships run off. Barely seen my mum half the year, so I know the amount of work that goes into it. But fair play to the county board. Um, <coughs> to the officials today, fair play to Dara. It was a good football and game, but done a right job in the first first county final. Fair play. To um, to Dean and Neutra Quick for the generosity throughout the year sponsoring us, and also to Sports Direct for the sponsorship this week. It's much appreciated. 
A huge thank you to the Blessing GA Committee for all the support throughout the years, um, especially in the fundraiser for Luca for getting behind us. It definitely brought all the club closer together. So thank you very much. <laughs> to Balto, look, there wasn't much in it. It was always going to be a good football and game. It was the last year's champions. We knew we had a battle, but we're definitely seeing you again. Thank you. Um, to our own management team, John and the lads, the amount of work that went in throughout the year was unbelievable. We had huge trust in you as we put a plan in place. Thankfully, we got exactly what we wanted. Um, to the bunch of players here in front of me, pack of legends. <laughs> I don't think Blessing has seen the tiny knit group of players. You know, often we leave Ockram on the wrong end, but we finally fucking out of boys! And then lastly, you know, this cup is 38 years in the making, coming back to Blessing. And, you know, in them 38 years, we lost a lot of good club people who would absolutely love to be here today. So this one's for them. Thank you.